Remember when I said all the FTKs were gone? What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm gonna to be discussing the Cyberstein FTK. That's right, we have another FTK in the format. Surprise, surprise, and you're not really gonna to be too shocked when you see the contents of this deck because it really isn't a surprise based off of what we've already seen in past FTKs that we kind of found a way to circle back and get exactly to where we are now. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, Simo, why are you showcasing another FTK? You're just gonna promote it and more people are gonna know about it, which means more people are gonna play it. But I look at it like like this. If you guys know about this FTK, wouldn't you rather me tell you about it rather than go into a big event and lose because you didn't know it existed? I kind of feel like, yeah, it's a double-edged sword and I'd rather share it with you guys so that you're prepared rather than completely blindsided by the fact that this FTK actually exists. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss a single upload. And if you really love the content that I produce on this channel, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because it's thanks to people like Uvaldo and Tyler that I'm able to bring you this content on a daily basis. So if you're interested, hit the join button down below or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Oh boy. So Cyberstein FTK. How does this FTK work? Well, if you guys remember back to the Danger Dark World FTK that took advantage of Cannon Soldier, the whole purpose of the deck was to use a ton of danger monsters to draw through your entire deck, eventually get to Cannon Soldier, and eventually establish a loop with Grapha and one of your Dark World monsters. They continuously just summon out the Dark World monsters and you fire them off with Cannon Soldier until your opponent has zero life points. Cyberstein FTK works in a very similar fashion because it takes advantage of, guess what? The danger engines. Yeah, who knew a whole archetype of cards that are basically upstart goblins on legs would actually promote FTKs? Huh, weird. But in any case, so for the Cyberstein FTK, you're using a ton of different danger cards to draw through your entire deck until you eventually get to your Cyberstein, but you also get to your brain research lab. And another card that can be used interchangeably here is telekinetic charging cell. Basically, both of these cards make it so that a psychic type monster doesn't have to pay life points to activate its effects. But Cyberstein is not a psychic type. Well, what you do is you make Reprodocus at some point, turn Cyberstein into a psychic monster, and now it can be affected by the Brain Research Lab or Telekinetic Charging Cell, and now it doesn't have to pay life points and can use its effect as many times as it wants in a turn, ultimately summoning three copies of Blaze Phoenix, which are going to burn your opponent for 300 life points for every card you control on the field. And if that's not enough damage, you can go ahead and overlay those into a Coach King Giant Trainer, which is not only gonna draw you cards, but it's also gonna burn your opponent as well, thrice per turn. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. Now, I gotta be honest, when I first saw this FTK, I was really skeptical because I didn't invent this by any means. It's been going around, the original creator who made it it seemed kind of gimmicky just because you had to play all these really, really weird engine pieces to like make this work. But what's happened is that in the past few days since we've gotten the new ban list and we knew that Cyberstein came off, slowly the deck began to refine itself. And we started to get to the point where you could cut some of those dead cards out of the deck in place of like more danger monsters or more cards that are gonna draw you cards. Or you kind of took cards out of the extra deck that were unnecessary. And now we got to the point where the build looks something like this. And I'm going to showcase the build that was on Lithium 2300's channel, Fantastic Concrete Creator, one of my favorites. You should definitely make sure you check him out so you can see more about this deck in depth. But this is the build that he kind of ended up on. And I think the biggest thing for me was with this deck initially was that, yeah, it's an FDK deck. It can go first. It can do things pretty well. And yeah, the danger cards are good at going second because they're just kind of giant cards. But the extra deck, because you had to allocate so much much of the deck to having the FTK, you didn't have anything really for going second. You didn't have access to the Nightmares or any of the good generic monsters in the extra deck that are good at breaking boards. Well, once we got to the point where we saw the build look like this, and you really only had to dedicate like five to seven spaces in the extra deck for the FTK specifically, 
then you now have the room to play all those generic cards. You can play the Nightmares. You can play stuff like Griffin. You can play stuff like Curious. I mean, this is when it starts to really open up, and now it's starting to worry me a little bit that this could actually be a potential threat. Now, is this deck unbeatable? By all means, no. There's plenty of weaknesses, and we're going to discuss those in a minute, but I find it fascinating the evolution that this deck has already undergone in such a short period of time. I mean, it's cool that this this deck's also incorporating stuff like the brand new Danger Monster, which foolishes danger cards into the graveyard. And while that may not seem like a big deal, that actually helps, you know, facilitate cards like your Chupacabra and make it live and make it so that if they hit something like that on a danger roll, it makes it not as detrimental to you continuing on with the rest of your plays. And the rest of this is pretty much just going to look like your standard Danger Dark World deck list, you know, just playing a ton of dangers, a few Dark Worlds, you don't have to play Grappa, which is kind of nice because it was kind of bricky. You're only playing the ones that are going to generate you plus ones now for the most part. But what also scares me about this deck is the fact that it has alternate win conditions because even if this deck gets stopped, which it has the ability to play through multiple negations, if you can believe that, but even if it gets stopped, there's still ways to play around the fact that you can't FDK them. I mean, you can very easily get Cyberstein back on the field if it gets negated, and then you can just summon out something like Naturia Exterio, and now you have a thing that has built-in negation on top of this massive board you've been able to assemble that your opponent's going to have to fight through. And then you have stuff like Curious in tandem with Nightmare Griffin, and by playing stuff like Imperial Order and the newly unlimited Eradicator Epidemic vibe, Virus, this could be insane because it just so happens the entire deck is comprised of very large dark monsters who just so happen to fit the category of being able to fall under the requisite for Eradicator Virus's effect, which means that going up against your Striker matchup, against your Altergeist matchup, you kind of have an auto win there. Imperial Order is kind of like in the same boat. Hell, you can even play Deck Destruction Vi or Deck Devastation Virus, excuse me, going up against something like Altergeist to hit the weaker monsters. Like, there's just so much you know potential with a deck like this and this is only like you know one of the iterations that it's undergone who knows if this gets in the hand of one of the very skilled players of the many that play this game and who knows how far it's going to go but the thing is I kind of wanted to target what's more at fault here is this more Cyberstein's fault or is this more the dangerous fault? So when you look at Cyberstein is Cyberstein kind of like an inherently unfair card yeah, like, I mean, doesn't really promote anything healthy in the game. I'm being able to pay 5k, well, yes, that's a lot of life points. Summoning the cards that it summons isn't exactly healthy. I mean, Exterio is just, like, kind of crazy. Last Warrior from another planet, even though this deck isn't particularly playing that. Again, it doesn't exactly promote healthy and interactive gameplay, even at the steep cost that Cyberstein does come at. However, in the OCG, Cyberstein's been at one for, you know, years, and really, it kind of pops up here and there but it's never been used to an insane degree like we've already seen after this new TCG ban list. Then you kind of look at the dangers and think, you know, dangers have been a part of a lot of FTKs in the last few years. I mean, they've only been out for such a short period of time, and this is what, like the fourth FTK? Even though it's basically the same deck, but you're just kind of like changing out what the win condition is ultimately. But the fact that you have cards that are essentially upstart goblins on legs means you can just dig through your whole deck, Summon a bunch of Saryujas to draw more cards in tandem with the Lure of Darkness and the beginning of the end because they all just happen to be dark. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of makes me wonder if Dangers might have a target on their back for the future because they've just kind of been abusing the fact that their draw power is so consistent and able to essentially enable all these FDKs to exist. But I want to wrap up this video by talking about how do you beat this deck? I mean, it's not unbeatable like I mentioned earlier. There's plenty of things you can do. I mean, Effect Negation works very well if you have stuff like Infinite Impermanence, Effect Veiler, Cyframe Gear Gamma. All of these are amazing at just hitting the Cyberstein, and that's pretty much going to cut off their play right there. Now, they do have ways to resummon it using stuff like Blackwing Zephros to bounce it back to the hand, then Saryuja's Effect to Special Summon it back to the field, but they're not going to be able to FDK you because now they have to pay cost for Cyberstein's effect, so they're only going to be able to summon out something like an Exterio, and then the board might not look as devastating. 
Another option is something like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit because you can hit it, Cyberstein will hit the graveyard, and yeah, sure, while they do play Monster Reborn in this deck, if they already used it for a prior play, or if they just don't happen to have it, then honestly, that could just be enough. But even if they revive it, same thing as before, they're gonna have to pay the 5k, so you're not gonna get FDK'd. The one card that this deck and pretty much all the other Danger FDK decks have lost extremely hard to is Droll and Lockbird. This deck has zero out to Droll and Lockbird, and because it's so reliant on drawing cards, if you drop Droll, you pretty much are just going to win the game outright because then you can set up your own board, have a lot more disruptions than you would if you lose the die roll and you're going second, and then you're going to be in a pretty okay position. But the fact that this deck has, you know, a lot of consistency behind it, it now has monsters in the extra deck that actually do something rather than just being solely relegated to the FDK, and it has alternate win conditions for games two and three, going up against some of the strongest decks in the metagame. I'm very interested to see where this goes. I don't think it's going to be too popular, but I don't really want to, you know, say that it's not because there's always a chance with an FTK that people are going to try to abuse it and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the brand new Cyberstein FTK. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video informative, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.